My presentation tonight is about the Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC. The current issue of the New American Magazine, of which I'm a senior editor, has a front page story on which it is based. Uh, protecting Rights, Loyal Americans Targeted by the SPLC. It is also available online at thenewamerican.com. It is my contention that the Southern Poverty Law Center is a serious threat to American liberties, to the liberties of all Americans. Now that will come as a surprise to many Americans who have come to view the Southern Poverty Law Center as the premier champion of civil rights of Americans. The founder, or rather co-founder, of the SPLC is Morris Dees. He has uh, become known over the last several decades as the leading spokesman of the SPLC in its campaign, it says, against hate and against intolerance. This is their website. And uh, the SPLC says that it is standing strong against hate. It says on its hate map, which is one of its premier featured uh, programs in its magazine, The Intelligence Report, and on its website, uh, says that it is fighting hate, teaching tolerance, and seeking justice. Those are admirable goals which most Americans, myself included, uh, would find uh, ourselves to be in sympathy with. Uh, however, the SPLC has become the premier practitioner of hate. That is, in using the uh, hate map and its many other publications, uh, websites, and uh, uh, programs, video programs, to attack groups with which it disagrees and assign to them unjustifiably the hate label. Imagine now if you woke up tomorrow morning and read your daily newspaper. And the headline said this. Instead of Carol Swain is an apologist for white supremacists, it had your name in that spot. It said that you were an apologist for white supremacists. How do you suppose your family, friends, neighbors, coworkers would look at you? Well, Carol Swain had that happen to her. It appeared in the Nashville Tennessean. The charge was made by Mark Potok of the Southern Poverty Law Center. He said Carol Swain is an apologist for white supremacists. So one might suppose that Carol Swain is some kind of nefarious character who is joined at the hip with Aryan nations or the Ku Klux Klan. This is Dr. Carol Swain. She is a professor of political science and law at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. What did she do or say to incur the wrath of the SPLC? Well, according to her, their attack on her as an apologist for, for white supremacism came about as payback because of her stance on immigration. It turns out that she is not in favor of open borders and blanket amnesty for illegal aliens. Uh, so, uh, she has been uh, targeted by the SPLC as being intolerant. Now, Professor Swain is the author of this book, The New White Nationalism in America, Its Challenge to Integration. She's also written another book on white nationalism. So she has been a very sharp critic of white supremacy, white nationalism. Obviously, as a black American, her ethnicity uh, would hardly put her in the camp of uh, white supremacists. Uh, but uh, because of her stance on immigration, uh, she has come under attack from the SPLC. She says, quote, the Southern Poverty Law Center tries to silence people on a range of issues. It's not just immigration. It's also people that are pro-life. It's people that are concerned about racial preferences, people that are concerned about same-sex marriages, gun control, immigration, and patriots. She goes on to say, Today, conservatives and Christians, of which I am both, are targeted by groups like the Southern Poverty Law Center that regularly seek to discredit us. Americans have cause to worry. What is happening is a bold attack on free speech 
and the inner workings of the democratic process. We must not let this continue, end quote. I heartily agree with Professor Swain and uh, again assert that the SPLC's attacks, which have been broadening to include many more Americans, uh, are indeed a threat to civil liberties. Now, Mark Potok, who made those charges, is the most visible face of the SPLC, frequently seen on PBS, NPR, CNN, ABC, NBC, uh, all of the, the major networks, as well as uh, having his and Morris D's uh, regular pronunciations uh, uh, featured in Associated Press, uh, New York Times, LA Times, etc. Now, is Professor uh, Carol Swain correct in saying that they are attacking many different Americans because they are Christian or conservative? Yes, here's another example. Bishop Harry Jackson, he's one of the many black ministers who have come under attack in the SPLC's intelligence report and on their website as a purveyor of hate. Bishop Harry Jackson, Reverend Keith Butler, Bishop Wellington Boone, Reverend Jesse Lee Peterson, and many other uh, black ministers whom I've uh, written about in uh, this issue of the magazine have come under attack. Now, what is it that they are doing that has caused the SPLC to target them? Well, it turns out that they have been very outspoken critics of homosexuality and of homosexual marriage, same-sex marriage. So, as a result of that, the SPLC claims that this constitutes hate and has put them uh, up there with the other uh, organizations that they're attacking. Here again, we go back to the Southern Poverty Law Center website. They say there are many enablers, that is, people who are mainstream politicians and media professionals who are enabling uh, hate uh, by... Uh, promoting what they call, what the Southern Poverty Law Center calls, anti-government uh, patriot uh, movement. Now, among those who they target as uh, chief enablers are Dr. Ron Paul, uh, the congressman from Texas. Uh, they say here, the Ron Paul revolution failed to put the radical libertarian and outspoken Texas congressman into the White House, but Paul's long-shot campaign gave voice to discontented conservatives and created a prototype of sorts for the Tea Party insurgency that followed. They go on to denounce his many views, uh, and then they go point out another one of their uh, enablers is Judge Andrew Napolitano. This is also from the SPLC website included uh, entitled The Enablers. This is another of their web pages, Hate Watch. Again, they're going after Ron Paul, and they say, Ron Paul invites neo-Confederate witness to testify in Congress. Among the many things that they uh, state in this article, they, they call Ron Paul a vicious opponent of the Federal Reserve. They point out that he is uh, chairman of a subcommittee uh, on uh, uh, banking and the economy. And uh, this characterization of him as vicious, of course, plays into their hate lexicon. Uh, Dr. Ron Paul is indeed a, an adamant uh, foe of the Federal Reserve. That's no secret. He has opposed it in principle and, in fact, for many years. He has called for it to be audited and for it to be abolished. But to use the term vicious implies uh, extreme radical and suggests even uh, illegal activity. The SPLC intelligence report is one of the chief vehicles by which uh, the SPLC demonizes and uh, vilifies its opponents. Uh, this quarterly report uh, usually features Ku Klux Klansmen Aryan nations, neo-Nazis on the cover, and copiously featured throughout the publication in photos, symbols, and, and in the text. But what's interesting is that the intelligence report, here again we see the uh, 2011 spring issue, hate groups top 1,000, and we see the uh, hooded Ku Klux Klansmen, the burning crosses, the swastikas, and on the very first page of this uh, report, we see a photo of the editor, Mark Potok. And who does he attack 
in the very first column of his uh, report. It's not the Ku Klux Klan, it's not the neo-Nazis, it's not the Aryan nations or uh, various violent skinhead groups, although that's what one would, uh, would uh, suspect from the cover that is given. No, the very first people whom he attacks in, on the first page of the report are Glenn Beck, Robert Welch, the founder of the John Birch Society, and the John Birch Society. This has been typical of the SPLC for decades. But in this particular issue, we see them broaden their attack to, to make a promiscuous charge against virtually every conservative and Christian group. Here we have the very first page uh, of the table of contents. And again, we see the uh, swastikas, the skinheads, the Aryan nations, guns, a lot of threatening pictures. And then who do they have as the uh, principal opponent of theirs right here, Cliff Kincaid. He is the head of the conservative media watchdog group, uh, Accuracy in Media, founded by the late uh, Reed Irvine. And uh, the, the implication is clear. They're trying to associate him with, uh, uh, with all of those symbols. The next page uh, has this photo, and again, are we seeing here a member of the Ku Klux Klan or the Aryan Nations or uh, some violent skinhead group? No, that is Tony Perkins. He is the head of the Family Research Council, uh, the Christian group uh, founded by Dr. James Dobson. If we look at the groups that the SPLC has targeted as hate groups or uh, targeted them for promoting hate or intolerance, we see that they've gone after Dr. James Dobson, his focus on the family, Beverly LaHaye and her Concerned Women of America, D. James Kennedy of Coral Ridge Ministries, Scott Lively and Abiding Truth Ministries, David Barden and his Wall Builders Ministry, the American Family Association, the Family Research Council, Cal Seedon Foundation, Americans for Truth About Homosexuality, Jerry Falwell and his Liberty Council, the Traditional Values Coalition, Catholic Family News, Christian Action Network, National Organization for Marriage, the Ludwig von Mises Institute, Gun Owners of America, Center for Immigration Studies, Foundation for American Immigration Reform, Peter Brimelow, the Social Contract Press, of course the John Birch Society and the New American Magazine, not to mention all the various Tea Party groups and other immigration groups that they've gone after, uh, pro-life and uh, pro-family organizations. Now, we began writing about the Southern Poverty Law Center uh, many years ago in the New American Magazine. I've carried many articles exposing their, their false characterization of conservatives, pro-life, pro-family people uh, as being uh, uh, connected somehow ideologically or organizationally with neo-Nazi, Ku Klux Klan, racist, anti-Semitic groups. And we pointed out many years ago that if they were allowed to be successful in this wholesale smearing of the groups that they were going after, that they would expand this to include many others. And indeed, that is exactly what they have done. They have grown so powerful and wealthy in their attacks uh, uh, that they regard themselves as being able to do this with impunity. And uh, the, the real danger now lies not just in the way in which they have marginalized uh, many people by declaring them to be racist or anti-Semitic or somehow uh, connected to neo-Nazism, but the, the real danger to civil liberties resides in the fact that they have become illegitimately married to the federal government. This began during the Clinton administration in wholesale fashion when the Southern Poverty Law Center and its attorneys and activists and so-called experts uh, began uh, being brought into the Clinton administration's Justice Department and the FBI under uh, Attorney General Janet Reno and FBI Director Louis Free. That has been expanded now with the creation of the Department of Homeland Security and so we see the agenda, the left-wing agenda of vilifying and attacking uh, conservatives and Christians brought not just uh, through the media to the American public, 
but brought through official channels of the federal government and then uh, from there down to state and local law enforcement agencies. And the slide which I'm showing you right here now is an example of that. It is a Department of Homeland Security publication entitled Right Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling Resurgence in Radicalization and Recruitment. And one of the problems with it, this was released in 2009, created a firestorm of protest uh, from military organizations, military veterans organizations, conservative organizations, pro-life, uh, pro-family organizations who were subjects of attack in this. I'll just show a couple of the uh, examples of that where it's targeting veterans. The report states, quote, returning veterans, and it's referring to, it specifically refers to the veterans of Iraq and Afghanistan, possess combat skills and experience that are attractive to right-wing extremists. DHS INA, that's intelligence and analysis, is concerned that right-wing extremists will attempt to recruit and radicalize veterans in order to boost their violent capacities. It goes on to say, quote, right-wing extremism can be divided into those groups, movements, and adherents that are primarily hate-oriented, based on hatred of particular religious, racial, or ethnic groups, and those that are mainly anti-government, rejecting federal authority in, favor in favor of state or local authority, or rejecting government authority entirely. It may include groups and individuals that are dedicated to a single issue, such as opposition to abortion or immigration." End quote. Now, the object here was very clear, to taint uh, veterans and pro-life and immigration uh, people who are concerned about those issues with the hate labels and obviously there are groups that are genuinely hate oriented. They're based on a hatred of particular religious, uh, racial or ethnic groups. Groups such as the Ku Klux Klan, uh, Aryan Nations uh, or uh, various skinhead groups. Uh, however, the whole intent of this is to smear other, other groups, conservative groups, who have no history of or any connection whatsoever with those groups. Now, this also is a, a very loaded term, which is a frequent um, label used by the Southern Poverty Law Center, anti-government. They refer to the Tea Parties, to conservative groups, to anti-tax groups, to anti-Federal Reserve groups and individuals as being anti-government. Uh, however, as uh, we pointed out, Congressman Ron Paul uh, is not anti-government. He serves in the government. He's taken an oath and he's served faithfully in the United States government in the House of Representatives for many years. Judge Napolitano is a government official. Uh, many of the conservative organizations are not anti-government. They are in favor of enforcing the Constitution in keeping our limited Republican form of government, which has limitations on the federal government's power and authority, as well as a clear delineation of the separation between legislative, exec executive, and judicial authority. So. The outcry over this report uh, uh, was very strong, and the American Legion uh, particularly took up the cause and uh, went after the DHS for portraying veterans as somehow suspect of being incipient Timothy McVeigh's, the convicted uh, bomber murderer uh, in the Oklahoma City bombing. The American Legion said this, Quote, the American Legion is well aware and horrified at the pain inflicted during the Oklahoma City bombing, but Timothy McVeigh was only one of more than 42 million veterans who have worn this nation's uniform during wartime. To continue to use McVeigh as an example of the stereotypical disgruntled military veteran is as unfair as using Osama bin Laden as the sole example of Islam, end quote. Now, the Secretary of uh, Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano, uh, was under pressure from members of Congress and the public and military veterans organizations, pro-life organizations, to rectify this. Uh, she uh, withdrew the report 
Uh, she did not want to apologize for the report, and she really didn't apologize. She gave a sort of apology, saying that she was sorry that people were offended by uh, this report. But there was no indication that there was going to be any effort to clean this up or make sure that it did not happen again. Uh, members of Congress and members of the public wanted to find out, okay, where did this originate? How is it that the Department of Homeland Security was regurgitating almost uh, verbatim information that appeared to be coming from the Southern Poverty Law Center? So they requested uh, information about the provenance of this so-called intelligence that allegedly was the basis for this report. Uh, Secretary Napolitano tried to keep that information from coming out, but Americans for Limited Government uh, initiated a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit, and the Department of Homeland Security was forced to release the information. And lo and behold, we found out when they did release this in August of 2009 uh, that indeed most of the information had come from the Southern Poverty Law Center. Here we see, released from the DHS, uh, the basis for their report. This is one of the main pages here showing all the citations of the Southern Poverty Law Center's uh, website. Now, think about this for a minute. Here we have the Department of Homeland Security, billions and billions of dollars in resources, our tax dollars that we give to them. Uh, they have thousands and thousands of investigators and uh, uh, personnel to look into these things. And they come up with an intelligence and analysis report. And what is it based on? Not any hard intelligence data, but a regurgitation of propaganda attacking the political opponents of the Southern Poverty Law Center. This is the real danger uh, of the SPLC. As I've stated already, they have gone beyond merely demonizing in the popular public media those with whom they disagree. They have now wormed their way into official channels by which they can move through the police agencies, the FBI, and the um, uh, state and local police to target those with whom they disagree. Now, on its hate map, the uh, Southern Pol Poverty Law Center has uh, this disclaimer. It says, quote, listing here does not imply a group advocates or engages in violence or other criminal activity, end quote. Now that's a throwaway disclaimer. It's meant to provide a, a fig leaf of legal protection. But of course, the listing on a hate map is precisely intended to imply that a group advocates or engages in violence or other criminal activity. That is the entire implication. That is why the SPLC goes to such great lengths to sandwich smear all the groups, all the legitimate conservative, constitutionalist, Christian groups, which it regularly attacks, in its publications. It very carefully scripts these uh, reports and these attacks to make sure that there are the proper number of swastikas and uh, Ku Klux Klan images and uh, neo-Nazi images surrounding every uh, conservative group that they want to defame and slander in the public mind. Now, we have uh, pointed out uh, a number of uh, ways in which the uh, SPLC regularly goes to extravagant lengths to discover or to fabricate non-existent links between conservatives and neo-Nazis, Ku Klux Klaners. You see, they seem to be obsessed by what they refer to as the danger from the right, as they define it. Uh, every, all danger it, it comes from the right. They're obsessed with that. They see no enemies on the left. They see no danger from uh, Marxists, from Leninists, Stalinists, Castroites, Maoists, uh, Trotskyists, any of those from the left. This is their, uh, a prime example of that. 
This is their website, Teaching Tolerance. Remember, that's one of their main objectives, is teaching tolerance. And this, uh, their Teaching Tolerance program is featured in uh, many hundreds of schools, perhaps thousands of schools. This uh, particular lesson is called An Unconditional Embrace. And who do you suppose uh, it glorifies? Uh, none other than William Ayers. Now, Bill Ayers is well known as one of the most infamous communist terrorists of the 1960s and 70s. He was one of the leaders of the bomb-throwing, murderous, weather underground terrorist group. He and his wife, Bernadine Dorn, uh, helped lead the attacks, uh, which uh, saw a rampage of bombings all across the country, including bombings which took people's lives, including the cop killing bombing spree in San Francisco that took the life of uh, Officer Timothy Donnell. Now, this is a picture of Bill Ayers uh, when he was arrested during the Days of Rage in 1968 in Chicago, his m police mugshot. Uh, but now he is welcomed as a uh, uh, as a leader uh, who has been transformed into an education professor and uh, is now gives lectures all around the country and tells us how to transform our schools and teach our children. Now, there might be an excuse for this if Bill Ayers had made genuine mea culpas and had uh, uh, renounced his, his earlier activities, but he has not. He is re unrepentant. In fact, in quite a number of interviews he has given uh, over the past uh, number of years, he has said he regrets that he didn't do more. He has no regrets for the uh, terror campaign that they launched, and when asked if he could have visualize doing that again, he said he couldn't rule that out. So he still describes himself, as he says, a small-c communist. Uh, but that's who the uh, Southern Poverty Law Center uh, believes we should embrace. Now, here's another very uh, interesting connection with the SPLC. Professor Nikki Giovanni was given the Woman of Courage Award by the SPLC. Professor Giovanni is notorious in academic circles for her promotion of radical socialist, communist, and racist uh, propaganda in the form of poetry. Uh, this particular poem was taken from her poem, The True Import of Present Dialogue, Black versus Negro. And Professor Giovanni, as a, as a professor, has academic uh, freedom. She's free to, to put out her bilge there. Uh, but one of her students uh, became an infamous uh, killer, Virginia Tech killer, Sung Ho Cho. Uh, was a student of SPLC's favorite bard, Professor Nikki Giovanni. He, of course, uh, killed many of his fellow students there at Virginia Tech. Now, I'm not suggesting that uh, Professor Giovanni's poetry, as uh, vile and insightful as it is, caused uh, this particular troubled student to carry out those acts. But if we saw any consistency and honesty by the SPLC and its champions, we would have to at least say, hey, wait, there's a double standard going on here. Can you imagine any conservative professor saying even something remotely uh, resembling uh, what uh, Professor Nikki Giovanni sa has said in her poetry, or one even uh, criticizing affirmative action uh, or uh, illegal immigration, and then you have a student uh, go off the beam and, and uh, shoot fellow students, do you think the major media would wait for a second or that the SPLC would wait for even a moment before drawing a cause and effect connection? No, you know exactly what the narrative would be, that this uh, environment of hate caused by uh, speaking against illegal aliens or speaking against affirmative action was responsible for the ideological uh, sympathy created in this uh, young, impressionable student. And we know the, the scenario that, that would happen. Not only would that professor be history and out of there, but every other conservative professor would 
come under attack as well. We see the connections be of the SPLC to many Marxist, Marxist-Leninist, uh, Maoist, and other communist organizations and individuals, and it draws to mind this famous quote from V.I. Lenin, the Bolshevik communist leader. He said, quote, we can and must write in the language which sows among the masses hate, revulsion, scorn, and the like toward those who disagree with us. And that, of course, is the Leninist principle, whether uh, they have consciously adopted it from Lenin or not, that seems to propel the SPLC. Now, we, we should point out that the Southern Poverty Law Center is terribly misnamed. It really should change its name to the Southern Wealth Enrichment Center because it has become one of the wealthiest and most luxurious of all of the private organizations here in the United States, and certainly among those in the civil rights activist field. Uh, the organization was begun in 1971 by Morris Dees, and it won its first uh, uh, major fame in 1987 with the successful lawsuit against the United Clans of America. Now, in, in 1981, uh, Michael Donnell, a uh, young black student, 19 years old, was taken by the Ku Klux Klan in Mobile, Alabama. He was brutally beaten, lynched, murdered. Uh, the Klansmen were eventually caught, prosecuted, and convicted. However, Morris Dees and the Southern Poverty Law Center approached the boy's mother, Beulah Mae Donald, at, to launch a civil suit on her behalf against the United Klans to bankrupt them and take their assets. And uh, they succeeded, and uh, one can applaud uh, when villains like that are, uh, uh, their assets are taken, and uh, in, in its literature, the SPLC has stated for now decades that the Donald case was so important because it, they won a $7 million judgment against the Klan for Mrs. Beulah Mae Donald. And so everyone thinks that Beulah Mae Donald got $7 million. No, she got about $50,000. The Southern Poverty Law Center, however, both from the judgment but even more so from the fundraising that they did using the Donald case, uh, according to the Montgomery Advertiser, they came up with around $9 million. And that was just uh, in the aftermath of the trial. Since then, they have continued to use the Donald case and a number of other cherry-picked cases to build up now an, an asset uh, uh, bank account of nearly $230 million. And of course, to go along with that, they have built a Poverty Palace 1 and Poverty Palace 2, their headquarters in uh, um, Montgomery, Alabama. And uh, along with that, Morris Dees has built his own lavish uh, villa, uh, shown here in photos, a photo spread, uh, Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous type of uh, showing here from the M Montgomery Advertiser. Now, uh, the tax returns for 2008 for the Southern Poverty Law Center showed that it then, by then they had $221 million in assets in their endowment fund. Uh, now that has since uh, gone up to reportedly around $229 million, <clears throat> making them one of the wealthiest uh, private uh, uh, groups in the country. Now the Better Business Bureau and a number of philanthropic monitoring groups have given them failing grades because they do not spend the money that they take in from donors on the cases and on the causes that they raise the money for. They have been criticized repeatedly by impartial uh, third-party groups who monitor these things for their excessive use of funds for remuneration for their own staff and for their own uh, expenses. Now, they have been shielded from the reality here, both in terms of their abuse of, of their funding capabilities, 
but also in terms of their abuses of uh, government uh, connections and their false attacks on conservatives by their friends in the media. Adam Cohen on the editor editorial board of the New York Times is a former lawyer activist with the SPLC. The New York Times has been one of the SPLC's chief proponents and champions in the media, frequently duplicating uh, whole web pages from the SPLC on the New York Times web pages. With this media uh, help uh, and the government help, the Southern Poverty Law Center's hate propaganda uh, is now spread not only through the media but in government circles as well. Now, the terms uh, hate group and uh, racist and extremist uh, and other labels like that, anti-government, are never defined by the SPLC, so it makes it very handy for them to spread it over just about anyone uh, they intend to. My research has shown that a hate group, as defined by the SPLC, is any group that the Southern Poverty Law Center hates or any group they want the general public to hate. Now one way they have done this in the government is by actually being appointed to the government uh, uh, boards. This is the Department of Homeland Security's Countering Violent Extremism Working Group page. Uh, this is taken directly from the Homeland Security's uh, website. And we see there that Richard Cohen, the president and CEO of the Southern Poverty Law Center, sits on the board of the Countering Violent Extremism Working Group. We see here that Lori Wood, who is regularly featured in SPLC media uh, programs, she's an analyst for the SPLC and she is an instructor for the Federal, and Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. She also sits on the board of this DHS uh, group. It is not surprising then that the uh, this DHS working group comes out with recommendations such as state and major urban area fusion centers be expanded. They are promoting this nationalization of our police uh, by creating these uh, through creating these fusion centers. These are centers that fuse together national, state, and local law enforcement in one center so that this propaganda can be divulged from the SPLC to its federal uh, cohorts and then down to state and local level. Now, this is a very dangerous development. We have never had a national police force here in the United States. And we have been pointing out for many years that the trend toward nationalization of police should be viewed with great alarm by Americans in the same way that the German people should have viewed the construction of the Gestapo in Nazi Germany. I have here a quote from The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich by William L. Shire, the historian. Famous book came out in 1960. On page 274 of that book, he writes this. On June 16, 1936, for the first time in German history, a unified police was established for the whole of the Reich. Previously, the police had been organized separately by each of the states, and Himmler was put in charge as chief of the German police. This was tantamount to putting the police in the hands of the SS, which since its suppression of the Rome Revolt in 1934 had been rapidly increasing its power. It had become not only the Praetorian Guard, not only the single armed branch of the party, not only the elite from whose ranks the future leaders of the new Germany were being chosen, but it now possessed the police power, the Third Reich, as is inevitable in the development of all totalitarian dictatorships, had become a police state. We in the John Burt Society are constitutionalists. We believe in the Constitution that our founding fathers gave us, and the Constitution assigns the vast majority of police powers to the state and local governments. As we have pointed out uh, regularly in the New American Magazine, uh, the movement toward a national police uh, state or national police powers brings with it many different uh, uh, dangers. Right here we have an example of that. 
Uh, this is the Southern Poverty Law Center's uh, page on Hal Turner, whom it dubbed the host of hate. Hal Turner was notorious for a number of years, particularly in New Jersey, but across the country, as a radio talk show host and blogger who was viscerally, vocally, uh, incandescently anti-Semitic, racist, uh, pro-Nazi. Uh, and the Southern Poverty Law Center used him as a poster boy to raise money for their group and to show that the uh, that hate was increasing in the country. Uh, this is another one of their pages talking about uh, Hal Turner. We reported in the New American Magazine, uh, and it wasn't picked up by most of the other major media, uh, when Hal Turner was arrested and prosecuted in 2009 and 2010, it turned out that he, this man, who is known as the most vile and vocal propaganda, propagandist for hate, was actually working for the FBI during this whole period that he was spewing his hatred across the uh, blogosphere. Uh, as we pointed out in the New American Magazine, this raises some very serious questions. Why is the FBI, which claims it is fighting hate, promoting individuals like this who are fueling hate all around the country? And the other question that logically follows is, is this. Did the SPLC actually recruit Hal Turner for the FBI? The SPLC is a, an advisor to, a consultant to the FBI. Uh, there are many other examples which point in the direction of the SPLC working with the FBI since the Clinton administration to recruit agents provocateur uh, like Hal Turner, uh, uh, which we see here. And that again shows the danger of having a centralized police force, national police force. Once you corrupt it at the top, you then can spread that corruption throughout the whole system. That is why the John Birch Society, more almost 50 years ago, began its Support Your Local Police program, SYLP. The second part of our slogan, Support Your Local Police, was, and keep them independent. We believe, along with the Founding Fathers, that it is essential to keep a division between the, the federal government, the national government, and our state and local governments, especially in the area of police protection. The police are supposed to be here to protect and to serve the citizens, not to protect and preserve, and preserve the power of political el elites who are in charge. <clears throat> so we have uh, reinvigorated our program to support your local police. When we began the program, it was not intended to be a, a program that said we support uh, local police in whatever they may be doing. If there are uh, genuine abuses going on uh, by the local police, uh, then that should be taken care of by the venues that we already have built into our constitutional system. We have the means to correct abuses by local police uh, through our uh, local city and county and state governments. The New American Magazine, uh, in addition to publishing a print magazine, as I pointed out, has a website uh, where we publish 20 to 30 times as, as many articles uh, every day, 20 uh, or more articles, thenewamerican.com. And we have uh, there kept up with many of these issues and informed the American people about these dangers. We also, at the John Burt Society, uh, jbs.org, uh, cover many of these uh, same issues and uh, have videos and articles dealing with issues uh, concerning the local police, uh, the SPLC, and other related items. <clears throat> As I stated at the beginning, the SPLC has obtained a, an undeserved uh, reputation as a champion of civil rights. In truth, it represents a very grave danger to the civil rights of all Americans. And it's time that uh, we contact our members of the House of Representatives and Senate 
and, and demand that they look into this and remove the SPLC's unconstitutional and unethical involvement in our federal government. Thank you very much.